Today we're going to look at one of the four market structures that we will be studying in this class. And this market structure is called perfect competition. Um, in Unit 5, we're going to be getting into studying the alternate market structures, which are monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. But today we're going to start by learning the perfect competition model um, because we're going to demonstrate some of the concepts we've learned in this unit, such as identifying profit maximization and things like that, um, through the co perfect competition model. So um, as we move forward, keep in mind that this perfect competition model is um, it's uncommon in perfection in reality, but it is a model um, that we need to know and understand. And you know, any real life example that I give you will be difficult um, because you'll probably be able to figure out some reason why it doesn't perfectly work, and, and that's because this is uncommon in reality, but uh, a model that we nev nevertheless need to know and understand. So. We're going to talk about perfect competition in the short run today, and the characteristics of perfect competition are that in these markets there are many, many sellers, um, so many sellers that we, we can't even count them all, so there's a whole bunch of people manufacturing um, this type of product, and the product that they're manufacturing and selling is standardized, or um, they're identical to one another, so oftentimes this is called a commodity product. These products are um, so identical that if you picked one up, you wouldn't be able to tell who produced it. Um, there's freedom of entry and exit into and out of the market. And so what that means is that sellers can come and go as they please, as uh, you know, if they decide that they want to enter the market or if they decide they want to want to leave the market because they're not making money anymore, um, they're free to enter and exit whenever they want. Um, there are no barriers to entry, and the factors of production are perfectly mobile, meaning they can um, take their factors of production that they've been using and um, exit the market and use them for something else instead if they'd like to. The firms in perfectly competitive markets are price takers, which means that the sellers, the firms, the businesses, have no price setting power. Um, there is perfectly demand perfectly elastic demand, excuse me, for their products. Um, they can sell as much as they want to at the given market price, but the market forces of supply and demand set the price of these products, and these sellers simply have to sell at the market price. Um, they cannot decrease or increase the price. All right, so as we study perfect competition, um, we're going to be looking at what we call side-by-side -side graphs of the industry um, and representative individual producers or firms um, side by side to see how these two um, parties uh, interact with each other and how they affect each other. So um, the market demand curve for the product in this perfectly competitive market is the horizontal summation of all the individual short run demand curves and individual producer demand curves. Um, and then this market supply curve is the horizontal summation of all the individual firms' uh, short run supply curves. So uh, again, in the short run, the market demand and supply curves are what make up the, the graph for the industry. And we know the intersection of these two curves is what's going to set the price um, that the individual producer is going to need to sell at. Um, now, the market price here is equal to the demand curve for the firm. All right, this is the firm's demand curve. We said that they have perfectly elastic demand, which would be a horizontal line. Um, we also have learned previously that average revenue is the same thing as price, um, because average revenue is total revenue, so all the the money that the firm is is bringing in from selling their products divided by the quantity that they sell. So that would um, give you the price at which the product is being sold. And um, in perfect competition. Demand, average revenue, and price are also going to be equal to marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue brought in for selling an additional unit of product. And since the firms can only sell at the given market price, every time they sell another unit of product, they're going to be bringing in um, whatever the price of that product is. So that's how much more they're going to be bringing in every time they sell another unit of product. Um, so therefore, we sometimes call this curve Mr. DARP because the firm's demand curve is not just the demand curve, it's the marginal revenue curve, the average revenue curve, and also um, the price of the product. 
Another curve that's going to be important to, to know and understand for the individual producer is their marginal cost curve, which we have previously learned about. Um, remember, the marginal cost is the additional cost of producing an additional unit of output. Um, this is the mirror of the marginal product curve. And remember, the marginal product curve represents the law of diminishing marginal returns. So the marginal cost curve is shaped the way that it is because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Um, and firms are always going to produce in the upward sloping portion of their marginal cost curve. All right, another important curve is going to be average total cost curve. It's important to know, you know, what your cost per unit of output is. Um, remember, this, this average total cost curve is a U-shaped curve or a bowl-shaped curve. Um, and marginal cost is going to intersect average total cost at average total cost lowest point. Also, a quick review, um, the four reasons for the U-shaped average total cost curve are, um, first of all, that fixed costs are being spread out amongst increasing units of output, and increasing marginal returns are being enjoyed, and then in the increasing portion here, diminishing marginal returns set in, and we have increasing administrative um, costs of running you know, a bigger company and producing more output. All right, uh, average variable cost is going to be a curve that we need to pay attention to as well. Um, and remember, average variable cost is also a U-shaped curve, and marginal cost will also intersect average variable cost at its lowest point. All right, so let's take a second to prove um, that the demand curve is the same as marginal revenue, average revenue, and price. So we know that average revenue is equal to price, and we know that average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity. So we're, we're actually going to prove why average revenue is equal to price here. Um, total revenue is price times quantity. So through substitution, we can say that average revenue is price times quantity divided by quantity. Cancel out the quantities, and average revenue is equal to price. So that's our first proof here. Secondly, um, we're going to show... Oh, and also, I guess we already talked about this. Because firms are price takers, the price is the same for all sellers. So, um, Secondly, let's show why marginal revenue is equal to price. Marginal revenue is the change in total revenue for each additional unit of output. And the change in total revenue is also always going to be the price that you are charging for that product. And since the price is always constant, marginal revenue is going to be equal to price. So we just kind of proved um, our Mr. Darp proof here, why Mr. Darp is is all the same, why MR equals D equals AR equals P in perfect competition. All right, now looking at the graph of a perfectly competitive producer here, not the firm, but an individual producer, um, let's look at how you figure out what their level of, um, their profit maximizing level of output will be. All right, so what you're going to look for is, um, you're going to look for Mr. Dark and whatever the market has set that price at, so you'd have to be given the price. Now in this situation, if this is the, the price that the market has set, we know that average revenue is equal to demand, average revenue, and price. Um, and we also know that our profit maximizing level of output is where marginal costs equal marginal revenue. We just learned that when we studied profit maximization. So to find our profit maximizing level of output for this producer, we're just going to look for the point on the graph where MR intersects MC, or where Mr. Darp intersects the marginal cost curve. And um, that will give us our profit maximizing level of output. So it's pretty simple. So the total revenue that this firm is, is bringing in for selling um, their profit maximizing level of output here is represented by this shaded area. So total revenue is average revenue times the quantity of sales. So that's why that area represents the total revenue. Um, if you were asked to identify average total cost, or I'm sorry, the area of total cost for the firm, um, you would need to look at their profit maximizing level of output and identify where average total cost crosses at that profit maximizing level of output and draw a horizontal line over to see what the average total cost per unit of output is at that level. And um, total cost is average total cost times quantity. So that gives us this light blue area here for total cost. And uh, finally, this is the area of profit. So we know profit is um, what's left over after we have um, paid our cost of production. And so it's going to be total revenue minus total cost. 
so this is what's left over here, or average revenue minus average total cost multiplied by our uh, level of output. All right. Now, depending on the market price, a perfectly competitive firm has four short-run possibilities. In the short run, the producer might earn economic profits, so that's profit above and beyond um, a normal rate of return after considering all their implicit costs. Uh, the producer may earn normal profits, which is uh, a normal rate of return, or zero economic profits. Um, a producer may lose money, but choose to produce in the short run in order to minimize losses. Or a producer may shut down immediately. But one thing to keep in mind as we're analyzing these four short run possibilities is that if a firm is going to produce at all, it will produce at their prop, at, at its profit maximizing quantity where MR equals MC. Um, so it's going to produce where MR equals MC or it's going to produce nothing. Those are the only two options. As we explain these four short run possibilities, there is a place that you can follow along and take some notes in your um, in your workbook and your practice problem packet and um, on that sheet, these are labeled as condition number one, condition number two, condition number three, and condition number four. And there are some graphs that have some curves that are not labeled. So if you're going to take notes in that packet, um, the first step would be labeling your curves, which um, the curves that are shown there, and you should be able to match them up based on their shapes, are marginal cost, average total cost, average variable cost, and then um, the average fixed cost curve is also shown on those graphs which you don't um, really need for this, but it's on there. So possibility number one, or condition number one, is um, earning economic profits or excessive, excessive profits above and beyond um, what's required to stay in business. So remember, economic profits means that you know, you're already covering all your implicit costs, and this is money, pure gravy, above and beyond you know, what you could ever expect to earn. So this is a fantastic situation. Um, you're earning economic profits if you are, um, if your total revenue minus total cost leaves you with, with money left over. So to draw in an example on your graph um, in, the, in the packet, um, go ahead and draw in your Mr. DARP at approximately $120 uh, on, your, on your graph. And um, if you're not following along in the workbook, you can just follow along with my example here. But remember, the, the market is what sets the price. So let's say the market sets the price in this, in this particular example at $120, and that's what we're showing here without the numbers on this, on this PowerPoint slide. Um, now, to identify your profit-maximizing quantity of output, again, you're going to look for where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So go ahead and locate that on your graph. And um, in the workbook, that turns out to be at about eight and a half units of output, which um, in the real world we'd back check then back to eight because you're not going to produce a partial unit of output. And the way we know the profits are being earned here is that average revenue is greater than average total cost at the profit maximizing level of output. All right, so that light purple area shows us the area of profits. Again, this is a great situation for a producer to be in. I'm going to end this first uh, portion of the lecture here and continue on with possibility number two in the second part of the lecture. So go ahead and click over to that if you want to continue.